Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube series, Beauty and Brains, where I talk about faith, politics, current events, controversial topics, and everything in between while I get glam. If you've tuned into my podcast, Liberty Before Lipstick, it's very similar types of content. I just do it on a podcast format instead of a video format while I do my makeup. Some of these episodes are uploaded to my podcast, so make sure you subscribe and download to my podcast if you haven't already. In today's episode, I wanna talk about how I I found God. I want to talk about my journey in faith and how I got to where I am right now. Uh, I do a lot of podcast episodes on scripture and on Jesus, but not a lot of YouTube videos, and I want to change that. I'm even thinking of starting a little live Bible study on YouTube or Instagram. I know a lot of people have been requesting it, so let me know if that's something you're interested in. Before I start doing my makeup, I have to share this with you guys. It blew my mind. This happened to me this morning, and I shared it on my Instagram, but I had to share it on YouTube too. So I showed on my Instagram stories yesterday that I went and purchased two King James Bibles. Um, and one of them I got for Raphael and one of them I got for myself. I got this one because it comes with an app that helps you with study notes and maps and videos and all these things. So I thought, wow, that could be really helpful. So I got home yesterday and I showed Raphael the other Bible that I got him because he's been wanting a new leather Bible. And the one I got him is stunning. It's beautiful. It's brown leather. It says Holy Bible. It's engraved. It's gorgeous. And as soon as I gave it to him and I saw how excited he was, I was like, oh, I gave him the cute one. And this morning I woke up to read it for the first time, read this Bible. And I opened the Bible and it was on this page. This is in Psalms. And I was going to read Psalms 91 this morning. So I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a little indent here along the Bible. So this is where the bookmark was. And I was trying to pull the book ribbon out and it would not come out. And I was like, what's the deal here? And I was like, okay, let me just see where this ribbon is. And I go, and when I see where the ribbon is tucked underneath, this is the page it was on. And the ribbon was tucked right here and there's a little indent here now, which will forever be here. And the indent points to Esther 414. It blew my mind because God has been putting the book of Esther over my life, keeps reminding me of the book of Esther since like last November. And I just could not believe that the Bible was open there. God has the best sense of humor. And I put it on my Esther highlight on my Instagram. So if you haven't already seen my Esther highlight, go check it out on my Instagram. But I share how God has been putting Esther in my life and reminding me of the book of Esther. And it's been such a huge part of my journey the last nine months. And whenever I saw the Bible was bookmarked, tucked into Esther 414, I was like, thank you, God. It's something so small, but so powerful. And it's been a rough week and I've been just getting like in spiritual warfare heavy all week. And when I open the Bible, like I can't stop smiling today because it's one of those moments where God's like letting you know, like I haven't forgotten about you. And it was just amazing. So I had to share it. Um, so good, so good. So growing up, I did not like going to church at all. So I grew up going to Catholic church and I just, I didn't like going to church. Uh, I love God. I always prayed to God. In college, I stopped going to church almost all together and I would only go on holidays because my college was still close enough to drive to my hometown and my mom, of course, was always like, like, come to church, like, you need to come to church on Christmas and Easter, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I always went on holidays, but I just never felt like that urge to go to church. I always thought, oh, it's something I'll do when I'm older, like I'll read the Bible when I'm older. Do you know what I mean? A few years after college, I went through a really bad breakup. And I know some of you watching have been following me since then, but I had been in a really long relationship and our relationship definitely was not centered around God. When I got my heart broken, I hit rock bottom. That was the lowest part of my life. I felt unexplainable pain. If you've been heartbroken or gone through heartbreak, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I just had no will for anything. I felt like my life was over and I just felt like I was at the bottom of a pit looking up and I saw no way out. Through getting my heart broken, I felt empty. I felt nothing. Um, I felt completely alone because most of my friendships were kind of deteriorated to not a whole lot because I worked all the time creating content and a lot of my friends after college had moved to other states. So I just felt like I was completely alone. 
and my family lived about an hour away so my mom came to visit and you know i would spend some time with my brothers but i just felt so empty i felt like there was nothing left to live for it's so crazy to think about it now but that was my first heartbreak we had dated for like i think it was seven years so it was a very long time and i had felt like my future had just been ripped out from underneath of me so after a week of just crying every single day eating ice cream you know the usual like what do i do now my life is over kind of kind of thing i just said god i need you like help me and so i had just woken up and i took molly out in the back and i saw one of the neighbors outside and when i saw her outside with her daughter she had a little baby i just had something in me saying go talk to her like go talk to her i think it was the holy spirit telling me but at the time i didn't realize it and so i just kind of walked over and i'm on the verge of tears of just crying and i look at her and i say how did you know your husband was the one because she has this beautiful family and then i just start busting out into tears and she invited me into her home and little did I know she was a devout Christian following Jesus and she was just such a wise person and she helped me so much uh, on my journey the year that I was living in that house. Looking back it's awesome to see how God places people in your life in the most unexpected ways to help bring you closer to him and she was a huge part of my journey. She breathed so much life into me with scripture, with God's truth and when I would ask her for advice she wouldn't tell me what she thought. She would tell me what the Bible says, what the word says. Like I would spend all day calling my friends being like, what should I do? How do I get over heartbreak? What should I do? And it never felt enough. It was just like, you keep drinking water, but you're so thirsty. And I would go speak to her and she would point me to the Bible. And all of a sudden I felt filled. I felt I wasn't thirsty anymore. My thirst was quenched. As I was sitting at rock bottom, I realized I need to go back to church. So I started going back to church because I had nowhere else to turn. My heart was broken and I said, okay, Jesus, I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. I don't want to be in pain anymore. And I realized that God was the only thing that could fill that space in my heart that had felt honestly empty for so long even when i was in that relationship there was always a part of me that was so empty and wanting more and wanting more from the relationship but it wasn't anything that a person could give me it was something that only god could give me a peace and a love that only god could give me and that hole in my heart that emptiness had to be filled with god so i started my journey to getting to know who jesus was because i had known jesus my entire life i had prayed almost every night but i knew him i didn't really know him. Who was he? What does he say about us in the Bible? Who were we made to be? And I started the journey of my self-worth, of who God says I am, of how worthy I am in God's eyes. And I mean, it changed the course of my life because for so long I had seen myself through the lens of the world, not the lens of how God sees me. Because the world and the culture values you on success, on your looks, how much money you have, you know, your status, your career. But Jesus, you were created in the image of God and God sees you more valuable than any gems, more beautiful than the ocean, than any creation here on earth. And it was through me getting to know Jesus and going back to church and reading my Bible that I started to discover, oh my gosh, I have been selling myself short for so long without even realizing it. I started posting videos about self-worth. You know, I started to learn who I was. I started to see myself the way God sees me. And it was almost like the rose colored glasses had just been pulled off. Like the veil had been ripped from my eyes of, wow, I am so much more than I even knew that I was. And I think it's important to note that before I started this journey with Jesus, I had my rebellious season. Like I had my moment where I tried to ease the pain with things of the world, you know, going out with friends and going to parties. And I've never been a drinker. I don't like alcohol, but I mean, there were moments where I was forcing myself to drink with my friends. So people thought I would be fun, something that I could never stand even before. And none of it 
ever helped anything. It was all just a temporary band-aid for something that could only be fixed through God's grace and through letting Jesus fill those holes that were always in my heart that I needed to fill with him. I needed to get to know him. When you have an encounter with God, it completely changes the way you look at the world. It completely changes your life. It's not to say you won't slip up and go back to your old ways. Happens to all of us, happens to the best of us. But when God saves you and he turns your life around, you can't help but to talk about it. You can't help but to share it with other people because you know that if God can pull you out of dark situations, if God can change your life, if God can heal you, God can save you, he can save anyone. Before I started walking with Jesus and seeking God, I always felt like everything had to be perfect. I would not show any imperfections on my social media. Everything had to be carefully constructed and posted. And I remember posting my first video talking about how I was struggling with a breakup and heartbreak. And that's when I really started to connect with my audience, with you guys, because I was being vulnerable and real. And it never occurred to me in that moment how many thousands of other people we're also going through heartbreak and how a lot of us, we kind of started going through this journey together. And I started sharing more, like that was the moment when I started seeking God, that I started sharing more of my heart, sharing more of Jesus. And this journey started in 2015 and then went until 2016 when I then moved to LA, which is the next chapter of my testimony. In 2015 in the first part of the year when I started coming back to God and was dealing with you know the breakup and then in early 2016 I met someone and I had only had one boyfriend before that and I was not looking to date anyone at all I was just so against it but the guy that I had met was chasing God's heart and that was so attractive to me because that was the same journey I was on and meeting him really catapulted my faith he taught me what Christian men should do and how they should treat their relationships. It was a level of respect that I never had before because I'd only had one boyfriend, one serious boyfriend. I had dated guys and went on dates and I was never treated the way that he treated me. And it was that moment where God was showing me there's so much out there for you, you know, to be with someone who's also actively pursuing God. So I started going to churches that just preach biblical truth. No man-made religion. I don't even say I'm religious because I'm just a follower of Christ. That's it. I follow Jesus. That's all. And I started my journey that God was taking me on of just going to churches that just preach the Bible. The Catholic church was not for me. I personally didn't have the best experience and I went to several Catholic churches. I know it is for some people, but it wasn't for me. I just wanted to hear what God had to say. And through that journey, I felt so many chains just be broken. I started going to churches that preach hard biblical truth, things that people need to hear. It's not just things that tickle your ears. And when it comes to church, it's such a personal thing. You have to really be praying to God and asking him to lead you to your church home that is the church, the community that you should be with. And it's very hard finding a church, whether you're a Catholic, whether you're non-denominational Baptist, whatever it is, it can be very difficult finding a church. I know when I moved to LA, it was so hard. I felt like I would be at a church for six months to a year and then I would leave, kind of bouncing around. It was very difficult. So if you're in that, kind of moment where you're figuring out where you should be going to church, definitely give it some time and pray about it. You know, with everything, pray about it, no matter what you do, pray about it. And God will really show you which church is for you and where you should be going. The government might say church is non-essential, but it is absolutely essential. Even if you can just get a group of people or your family together to worship on a Sunday and to talk about God's word, you can still have church in your home. Uh, the most important thing to me is biblical truth. I wanna hear what the Bible says. I don't wanna hear what man says. I don't wanna hear some motivational, self-help book saying, you know, all these fluffy words with no scripture. I want scripture and I want to know what God says. The Bible literally teaches itself. If you read the Bible, it'll tell you everything you need to know. I used to be really intimidated by the Bible because 
everyone made it seem so complicated. And I was like, I just don't understand it. How do I understand the Bible? I don't get it. But the good thing now about the digital age is that there are so many different Bible studies and study notes. The new Bible that I got that I mentioned is King James Version. But if you're just getting into it, I definitely recommend maybe reading NLT. NLT is an easier version to absorb. I've just been reading for long enough to where I wanted to go up to King James Version. I've been doing a lot of research on different translations. That's a whole nother rabbit hole. Um, but you can get the Bible app. It's free. If you don't have a Bible, start with the Bible app. And it has all the different translations as well on there. You can actually filter scripture by your mood. If you're looking for something that's hopeful, something that's excited, something that's sad, something that you're feeling confused. It's a really great way to start reading key scriptures by what you're feeling, what you need to fill your soul. Uh, it's a really great way that you start getting familiar with verses. So the relationship that I was mentioning with the Christian guy, it didn't last very long. It was a very short relationship, but I learned a lot and I knew God put it in that season to teach me a lesson, right? To teach me something about godly men that I had never experienced before. We had dated, I think it was less than six months and we actually broke up when I was in LA and I had no friends. I had just joined a women's Bible study and I hadn't really gotten to know anyone. I was still doing YouTube and stuff. So I literally moved across the country with me and Molly, my dog. And I was doing the same thing I did in Tennessee, just by myself in the middle of Hollywood. And LA was its own spiritual warfare every day. I had been walking with the Lord for a little over a year at this point and we were doing distance. So it really wasn't gonna work out anyways. But it was one of those moments where I'm like, all right, God, like I already saw the change in my life because Jesus is my first love. You know, it says in the Bible to go back to your first love, which is God. And with my first breakup, I didn't have that. I was so reliant on the culture and I believed in God, but I wasn't walking, you know, like I've said a million times. And I think it's important to know that difference. And I'm not discounting how hard heartbreak is. Even if you are following Jesus, it still hurts. It hurts a lot. But knowing that God was right there with me and that he would collect every tear and, you know, knowing that God's plans are far bigger and better than any plans that I could make and just trusting that God wrote my love story before I was ever born. You know, he wrote our stories and knew us before we were born. How amazing is that? So knowing God's truths helped me to really arm myself with the full armor of God. I have a whole podcast episode on the full armor of God. If you haven't already listened, definitely give it a listen. So at this point, I was just really not interested in dating at all. I really just wanted time to be alone with God and to prepare myself to be a wife one day, you know, to focus on my relationship with Jesus. I knew that in God's timing, he would reveal the man that he wanted me to be with. So six months of living in LA, I had only went on two dates and they were <sighs> nothing promising, no good. Our building was this really small new complex in the middle of Hollywood. And like I said earlier, I didn't have any friends. So I thought, you know what, let's, let's just go and meet some people that live in the building. So I get to the party, I almost didn't even go. Like I walked out of my apartment and then I walked back and then I was like, okay, I'll go. So I just go, barely have any makeup on, just went to talk and get to know people and everyone there was drinking and I don't drink. So I was like, ugh. So I'd been at the party for about an hour and had a lot of awkward conversations. So I was like, oh, I think it's time for me to leave. And Raphael walks in and the building manager hadn't introduced me to anyone the whole time I've been there. But she was like, hey man, I wanna introduce you to one of our new tenants. And I was like, okay. And so she introduced me to Raphael. And I just remember thinking that's totally random. And when I looked at him, I didn't think anything of it. I wasn't like, oh my gosh, that's the one. I, I didn't think anything. I was so against dating at this time. And so I started talking to him and we started chatting. And um, that's the first time that we met. And he made fun of me because I was very outspoken, like very bold. I feel like my my southern twang was a little bit stronger then because I you know hadn't been in Los Angeles that long. We started getting to know each other as friends for months before we started dating and little did I know that was going to be my husband. Obviously I had no idea at the time. Funny how God works. I don't want to go too much into our story because I do want to tell the full story in another episode, but that was the first time that we met 
and God just is really great and he always knows what he's doing because I'm smiling right now. And I know this episode is not about relationships or heartbreak, but my heart broke so Jesus could heal me and show me that I needed him. So that's why I'm talking about it because it's a huge part of my testimony. But looking back, like there were so many nights that just were endless nights of be crying and being upset and just saying like, God, like, what do you have for me? I feel so alone. Like, I just want to understand. And it was all worth it once I met Raphael. Like, I missed my friends back home. I missed my family on the other side of the country. Um, and I mean, Raphael just like, when we started becoming friends, he like instantly became my home. Like it was my safe space. And it's so funny because when we were just friends, I was going to church on Wednesdays and Sundays. I had found a church in LA that I liked on Sundays and another one that was only on Wednesdays. So I did both. And I'd always tell him like, let me know if you want to go to church. Let me know if you ever want to go to church. And I remember one week he was like, hey, can I go to church with you today? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And it was one of those moments where God used me to bring him back home. And he was like, you know, I've been in LA for years and I've always wanted to go back to church. I just didn't know how. Living in LA or any big city, most people that are in church really want to be there because it's not something that is like highly valued compared to other places in the South. In my opinion, like growing up in Tennessee, everyone went to church, you know, it was like, you don't go to church where in LA, I never knew anyone that really went to church. Do you know what I mean? Especially in Hollywood, it was much more culture focused than God focused. As I've mentioned before, the rest of my time in LA was very difficult. After the first year, the spiritual warfare got even more intense. And with how expensive LA was, how you have to keep up with appearances in LA, I found myself just working more and more and more. And the more I would work, the more I got involved in the beauty industry, the more trips that I went on, I almost felt like I was being pulled away from God. I also found the churches that I was going to were not preaching hard biblical truth. They were more motivational, self-help. We really just want to baptize people. Like they were the types of churches that just want to get their baptism numbers up, but they don't provide any other resources past that. Like it was very much a new believer church. And I wanted something that was more mature that had, you know, hard biblical truth. So I could always be learning about Jesus. And so we would go to church every weekend and the worship would be great. And it kind of made you feel good when you're listening to the message, but it was more about the pastor's personal experiences versus God's word. If you've ever been to LA or if you live in a big city, you just work all the time. Like you literally live to work, to keep up with everything. Everything's more expensive. So as I found myself working more and more, I felt so far from God. I wasn't putting in the time to read my Bible. I was definitely praying a lot but I wasn't wrapping myself in the armor of God, in the full armor of God. I was only allowing myself a portion of it. You know, I dedicated so much time to work and creating content and then LA, like the spiritual warfare, and it's just such a heavy, dark cloud for me when I lived there. I felt like the enemy was attacking at all times. Like the devil was just coming at me all the time. And I was so overwhelmed. Like I found myself on a constant burnout all the time in LA. And that resulted in me giving into the culture. You know, I started dressing more provocatively. I started showing more of my body and, you know, okay, sex sells. Like I love Jesus, but I'm also like, should love my body. And I got very sucked into the progressive Christianity, which says you can do whatever you want. You know, it's okay. God will forgive you. Like you can dress however you want, own your body, women empowerment, kind of like the whole feminism and culture of the world. And I'll do a whole episode on feminism, by the way. Um, but all of these things that were not biblically accurate, they were people who wanted to make the Bible fit their life instead of changing their ways to follow God's word. And I really didn't know any better at the time. In episode two, I talk about the untold story and the God story of why I left LA. So make sure you watch that after this one if you haven't seen it. But during that time when I moved to LA, I was so like bright eyed and naive. And when I would go to beauty events, I would always like, you know, ask people, how are you doing? How's your heart doing? Like what's new? Like I genuinely care for people. And I even remember trying to talk about God with people, not trying to push it down anyone's throat, but just, you know, talking about how I went to a new Bible study group and, oh, do you go to church? What church do you go to? 
And I found myself constantly at dead end. And you know, a lot of people online will say they're Christians or they follow God or they might have a scripture like in their bio or post things or say, oh, thank I thank God for my job. They're not actually walking with Jesus. And I, I don't mean that in a judging way. I was there for a long time myself. I say it in a way of there are a lot of people who claim they're Christians who don't know Jesus, who don't know what the Bible says. And those people, quite frankly, make Christianity as a whole look like a joke because they'll say they're Christians, but their lifestyle, the fruit they produce is the complete opposite. And like, I'm not perfect. Nobody is perfect, but there's a difference between actively trying to follow Jesus and to live a biblical lifestyle versus doing whatever the flesh tells you, you know, whatever you feel like and disregarding what God says. Those are two very different things. And for people who don't know God or people who are new believers, it can be really confusing. And the easiest way to know if you're following Jesus is to know what the Bible says. And that's what I've learned, you know? The reason why a lot of Christians buckle under pressure while they bow to the culture and to the wokeness and to whatever society says is, is right is because they don't know the Bible. And that's what I've learned. The more I get to know what the Bible says, what God says, the more I'm able to prepare myself to do better, to really be combating spiritual warfare and to be dying to myself and picking up my cross every single day to live for Jesus, to strive to be more like Jesus. You can't follow Jesus and be more like him if you don't know who he is. One of the reasons why I don't question what God has for my life is because what he's gotten me through thus far. Like I'm telling you, there are so many things that we want that God does not put in our path or allow to come to fruition because he knows what we need. And that was a hard lesson for me to learn. Because I'm telling you, even when it comes to heartbreak, there were moments I would just cry out to God and be like, God, like, please just bring him back. Like, please, I'll do anything. And I kept thinking like, okay, you know, this relationship's gonna work out. When looking back on it, now I understand. Now moving forward, I understand that that was not for me. That was not what God had for me. And it's happened from relationships to jobs, careers, homes, like all of these things in my life, opportunities, like things that I wanted that didn't work out. And I'm like, I understand now. It would have been a disaster or wouldn't have worked. And trusting God with your life, with your story that he's already written, that's how I'm able to have such peace, even in the turmoil, even in hard seasons. Like this past season has been long. I'm sure all of you guys are, are feeling it too. It has been so long. It has been so tiring. I feel like currently I'm just walking and I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and I'm walking, but I never seem like I'm getting any closer. It's like, I'm not going anywhere. But at the end of the day, I'm at peace because I know that God's plan will come into fruition. I know how the story ends. I know that God wins. And you know, it says in the Bible, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has worries of its own. You know, something else that God's been reminding me of lately is that anything apart from God is not happiness. Anything on this earth, whether it's money, cars, jobs, you know, whatever it is, apart from God, it is just temporary. It's not actual happiness because apart from God, it is nothing, you know, because the world, like everything the world teaches you draws you away from God. It's like what John 15, 19 says, which is if you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because I chose you out of the world, the world does not love you as its own, you know? Jesus chose us to be set apart. That's why everything of the world always seems to go against Jesus. You'll never see anything of the mainstream pushing Christian content. You know, where is Christian content on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or any of these platforms? You know, where is their Christian vertical? You won't find it. You have to find people. I can't tell you how many DMs I've gotten since I've become more vocal of like, hey, what other Christian beauty influencers do you follow? What other Christian influencers do you follow? It's not something that's easily found, which is very sad. That's one reason why I wanted to create this video because there needs to be more Christian content put out there. There needs to be more people speaking up for Jesus. You know, for a long time, I thought I had to separate God and work, God and social media. And then I realized like, why am I separating my heart? You know, if I believe God is the one true God and I believe what he says in the Bible, you're supposed to preach the gospel, to share the good news of Jesus. How am I going to separate Jesus from anything I do 
when we're made in the image of God, when our whole purpose here is to share about Jesus and share his love and to treat people like that. Do you know what I mean? But the culture of the world teaches you, oh, keep religion and politics separate. Keep religion and your work separate. The Bible was covered in politics. Jesus used so many people in politics to save his people, like Esther, perfect example. The world loves to gaslight Christians because the devil knows if he can make you feel like, oh, don't do that or you'll be a bad person, that you won't because you're like, okay, well, you know, Jesus doesn't judge and Jesus was a loving God, so I won't do that which goes back to Christians need to know what the Bible says because Jesus did not sit with tax collectors and sinners to say, hey, you know, keep living your life, keep doing your thing, I love you anyways. No, he sat with them so he could teach them about God and to teach them to part from their sinful ways. I'm gonna finish my makeup, which is just my lip color, and then I'll be back with my final thoughts. As always, I'm going to leave you with some scripture, and I feel like no verse is more appropriate right now than Esther 4.14, especially after what happened to me this morning. So I'm going to read from the NLT version. I have my Bible here, but I know KJV can be a little bit hard for some people to understand. So Esther 4.14 says, If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made a queen for such a time as this. The whole story of Esther is so relevant to the time we're living in right now. And the message behind this verse is, if you are quiet at this time, it's okay. Jesus will save his people using someone else, but why not take a leap of faith for who knew if you were created for such a time as this? You were given your voice for such a time as this. And if you watch my Why I Left LA, the God version, episode two of this series, this will all kind of make sense a little bit more. But I truly believe that for my story, God gave me my platform for such a time as this. You know, I've been doing beauty content for almost a decade, which is a long time. And I went through my ups and downs and I think... One of the hardest times of my walk with Jesus was when I lived in LA and it wasn't until everything happened the last year with the pandemic and with lockdowns and I really started leaning into Jesus and I found my voice and I found my spine and my bravery and all I want to do is kingdom work now. You know, I don't care about anything else. I don't care what the world thinks of me or what I say, or I don't care about my status in society. I care about doing work for the Lord. And, you know, if there's anyone out there listening to this that is looking to find their voice, all you have to do is talk to God. You know, God is so ready to just talk with you and he listens to everything you say. And through God, you just find the ultimate peace, the ultimate comfort, even through storms, even through hard seasons. And I was such a miserable, anxious, worried person before I gave my life to Jesus. I mean, I looked at the negative in everything. I was so stressed all the time. I was so worried about every day that was coming. And it wasn't until my heart was broken that then God healed me and showed me how to live my life for him, how to walk with him, he started showing me who he really was and the power that he has. Jesus is a healer. He's a miracle worker. He can heal anyone. He can pull anyone from any situation. There is nothing that is too much for God to do. He can do anything and everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you feel comfortable enough, if you want to share some of your testimony down in the comments, please feel free to let us know, you know, start the conversation down below. Let us know how you found Jesus or a moment where God spoke to you or God revealed himself to you that led you to walking with Jesus. I would love to read some of your stories and testimonies down below. Um, don't forget to like this video if you liked it and don't forget to hit subscribe if you have not. Make sure you also hit the bell so that way you're notified when I upload and share this video, you know, share this video with a friend. YouTube doesn't like to push Christian content. I'm sure YouTube will try to suppress it, but if we share it enough, maybe we'll get more people to see this message. I am not worried about anything that's coming for the future of America or the world because I know God wins. I know how the story ends and God will win and God will have his way, whatever that looks like. And he is forever king. He forever sits on the throne. For more content like this, don't forget to check out my podcast, Liberty Before Lipstick. And until next time, God bless.